Hi, I'm Candy from Quilt Vine, and today we are doing round five of Rising Quilt Vine's first original around the block of the month. And this round is a flying geese that is got curved edges. So here we go. Okay, to begin with, to make our quick flying geese, or um, sometimes it's known as a five inch block. We need one rectangle, the size that it tells us in our pattern. I need one rectangle of my print and two squares of my background. And my background fabric, I'm going to right sides up, like right here on my map, my print fabric, I'm going to fold it in half, matching my edges across the bottom. I've got my fold across the top. Then I'm going to lay that on my background square. And I'm going to match the edges across the bottom and on the sides. And you can see it's a little bit shorter than my background square. Then I take my background square, my other one, right side down and place it on top. And I take it to my sew machine and I'm going to stitch this side a quarter inch seam. And you can see I want this folded part at the top and everything matches the other three ends. Across the top it doesn't come the whole way up to the background. So let's take it over here and stitch it up. Quarter inch seam. Now let's let's open it. I'm gonna set my seam and press it open. Then you want to take and see how this is sewn in the seam. I'm just gonna fold this open and I want to bring see this part over here. I'm gonna open it up and that's gonna be across the bottom. And I'll make sure that comes the whole way down to the bottom. I'm gonna make sure that my point is nice and pointy. Get everything straight there. It might be a good idea to press it, squirt it with a little bit of a starch alternative or something. Right now I'm using flatter. So and then I'm gonna press it. Now, in order to be able to do the next step, I need to stitch it down across the bottom. So I'm gonna again take it back to my machine and now this time I want a scant quarter inch. I'm gonna move my needle over to the right a little bit and I'm gonna stitch a scant quarter inch and I will explain to you why after I do it. And we need it scant because you wanna make sure that this ends up in your seam when you put all the blocks together. Can even be like an eighth of an inch. It doesn't have to be much of a seam. Just want to make sure you you catch this across the bottom. See how I've sewn that across the bottom? Now to get my curved edge I need my glue stick or you can use a little bit of white glue. I have some of that too. Um, I, maybe I'll show you both. So my glue stick I'm gonna this edge here right along the edge of the print I'm gonna put some glue stick on there and then we're gonna fold it back and we're gonna press it and pressing it sets that glue. So see how I roll this back to a nice gentle curve. I'm gonna take my iron and set it because that'll set the, the glue immediately. Or if you don't have glue stick, if you've got some white glue, you can do that. Uh, let's just do this along here. We can put some little dots. And then again, I'm going to take and just roll this back. Make sure I have a nice point up here. I don't want to um, 
cross them over. I just want them to kind of like meet in the middle at the top there. If you can see that. I'll hold it up closer for you then. Because I could probably fold it back even a little bit more and have them cross over, but I don't want to do that. So, see how that looks there? Now, what we're going to do, see how these are kind of like free flying? This edge that I glued on, oh, that I glued down, that folded edge that I glued down, we want to stitch that down now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my clear thread in my saw machine and with a nice zigzag, I'm going to sew that edge down. And let me show you here if you can see on one of the ones I have done. I have this, here's some that I have done. And uh, I don't know if you can see that zigzag or not because I used a clear thread. But then see, this is still hanging loose. It's kind of that 3D effect, but it's not loose the whole way back. It's only loose to that zigzag stitching. So can you see that? Okay, so I'm gonna put my clear thread in and I'll show you what I'm doing there. Okay, I've changed up my thread and my foot and my stitch. So make sure if you're gonna do a zigzag stitch, make sure you put that open toe foot on because if you leave that quarter inch foot on, you are going to break your needle. And then I've changed to a zigzag stitch and I like my zigzag stitch. I've messed around with it. I don't like it real small and I don't like it too wide. I've actually set my width on my zigzag to 2.5 and my length to 2.5. I don't wanna build up of too much thread and since this is, you know, a finished edge, I don't have to worry about, um, you know, raw edges or whatever. Okay, so let's, so I'm going to catch this edge here where I've glued down. So let's start here, I've got my zigzag. And now we're just gonna go, you want the, the right of your needle to hit like the background part and the left of your needle to hit that part that you've glued over. Because we're just gonna go along the edge there. And with this clear thread, it's very forgiving. Sometimes I just do this a little too fast. And when I get up here to the top, I'm going to come up in here and when my needle is to the right, like in the background part, I leave needle down and flip this around and then I'll come back down and do this other side. Now you're going to need a total of 20 of these flying geese blocks. So what I would do is, um, you know, I would break it up. You might want to do one like this first and just make sure you, you, you know, got it down what you're doing right. But then you're going to want to chain, sew them together, chain piece them, you know, continue doing it so you just get, uh, get them done quicker. Have them. So here we go. If we can see this. That's the one I just did that did the whole thing right here while y'all were watching. And there it is. So now I've got to make 19 more. So we'll go over this just one more time. We've got our print and we're gonna fold it in half with all of our raw edges meeting. We've got our background fabric right side up, put our print on top of it, matching up all the raw edges and our background fabric on top of that, right side down. And then we're gonna stitch that quarter inch right there. Now what I would do is I would go and do that much with all the rest of them. Once you've made one and you know what you're doing, you see how it turns out. Do this with all of them. So the other 19, you're gonna do this. Then you're gonna take all 19 of them and go to the iron and we're gonna press this open. Then we're gonna open up our flying geese. Make sure we got a nice good point up there. 
bring that edge down to the bottom here. I'd put a little bit of starch spray, starch alternative on it. Press it down. Okay, then I would do that with all the rest of them. All 19 of them, do this. Now I will, I've got that pressed. I'll take all of them now and I'll stitch across the bottom here to stitch that down. We wanna do that with less than a quarter of an inch, about an eighth of an inch, you know, good scant quarter of an inch, maybe even eighth of an inch. Just stitch that down across the bottom. And I would do that with all the rest of them, all 19 of them. Now, I'd get all these done to this point. We got stitched across the bottom there. Now we're gonna glue the edges back. We're gonna get that nice curve. So let's get our glue or our glue stick. And that's here. Okay, just gonna curve that back. And we want it to be gradual up here at the top and down here at the bottom. Set it with the iron, it dries that glue instantly, holds it in place. I'm gonna flip around and I already put my glue dots over there. So once again, I wanna make sure these meet in the middle. I don't want them to overlap up here. Nice gradual curve. And let's set that. So I would do that now with all the remaining ones. I'd glue them in place and pile them all up. So I'd get, have 19 of those. And now I'm gonna take and stitch, do that zigzag top stitching for all of them. I, once again, I need to change my uh, thread and my foot. Okay, I've changed my foot to my open toe foot. I have my Monopoly clear thread in, and I've changed my stitch to a zigzag stitch, and I have that two and a half, 2.5 wide and 2.5 length. And then we're gonna go stitch that down. Make sure to catch the right of my needle is, is off that folded back part and the left of my needle is catching that folded part that's glued over. Okay, needle down. Doing it a little fast there, but you know what you're supposed to do from when you've seen me do it the last time. do that, all that with all the rest of them all the other 19 and you keep doing that until you have all 20 of them looking just like this once all 20 of your flying geese blocks are done we're going to piece them together end to end we need four rows of five so see I've got them all pieced together here end to end with my quarter inch seam so I have five here pieced together. Then two of those you're gonna take and you're gonna sew onto opposite ends, or opposite sides, I should say, of your quilt top. And then with the other two, we're gonna put on our applique blocks from a previous round. Okay, I've got my, my applique circles from round two. When we put these on the backgrounds, we kept the backgrounds bigger. And so now we need to trim those up to five and a half inches. We're gonna to need to find the centers of, of the sides. So let me fold that over. I'm just gonna finger press it to find the centers. And this side. So since we want those trimmed up to five and a half, 
half of that is two and three quarters. So I'm going to trim two of these sides. I'm going to line my two and three quarters with my center mark. Trim that. I'm going to flip it one turn. Line my two and three quarters down that mark. I'm going to flip it one more time. Now these are the two sides I trimmed. So now I'm going to take, I'm going to measure five and a half along that side, five and a half along my bottom here to make sure I have a five and a half inch square. And I need to do that with all of my applique blocks and with this five and a half inch square. Then I take two now I need to take two of my strips that have five of these pieced together and these get sewn on the ends and you know how that one circle is a little offset I want that toward the center which would be toward the bottom of the flying geese and there's a, a diagram in the directions for you to know. So then I would just put that over and sew that on and sew that onto both sides of this. So then to finish up this round, you'll sew two of these rows without the corners on opposite sides. And then the two of the rows that have these sewn on the corners, you would put them on the other side. And then you are done round five of rising. Well, we have only one more round to go of rising around the block of the month. I hope you are having fun doing this and learning a few new techniques. And I'll see you next month. Thank you.